galaxy in the entirety of Major League Soccer. Starting quite brightly here, mind you. And they could be in here. And they have taken the lead with an own goal. Absolutely against the script. With the run of play, mind you, because LAFC have stuttered out of the starting blocks. And LA Galaxy have set about them and maybe have sown a seed of doubt but on the LAFC front foot minds. From the opening whistle, John. On the front foot, and a lot of it is just the freedom of Sebastian Legette and Christian Pavone. Neither of them playing central. So the two center backs are LAFC are struggling to pinpoint who do they pick up. Now you've got interchanging runs. Legette tries to play a ball across, ends up back of the net off of Latif Blessing. But it's been all LA Galaxy in the opening five minutes here as the target goalpost game doesn't lie. Check from VAR, Dave Ganta is complete. The penalty award stands. Keeper's right, Diego Rossi. Good penalty, good penalty. And Galaxy's lead lasted barely seven minutes. You could tell David Bingham did his homework, go back to the penalty call, Perry Kitchen with his arm up, the assistant referee on this near side sees that. So does the referee. But the one penalty Diego Rossi took against the Houston Dynamo in 2018 went to the keeper's right. You can tell David Bingham and the LA Galaxy did their homework. Good penalty from Rossi. Good start to the game, despite the absence of Javier Hernandez. Just to repeat, if you've just joined us, a calf injury sustained in training 48 hours ago, the reason for his absence tonight. And whether he makes it for the last game in the group against Houston on Thursday is open to some conjecture. Depth on the cross. Oh, a good header in the end as well. That's the second keeper elevated tonight, and now Pavone has to go through the mental preparation all over again. Cisniega saved a Daniel Shallowy penalty at Sporting Kansas City on a rare appearance last season. So who has the steelier nerve? Pavone at the second attempt. And never mind that this rivalry is being played out in entirely unfamiliar surroundings. It's a very familiar tale that's developing. Well, in the last couple of penalties that Pavone took for Boca Juniors in 2019, he went to the keeper's right. Now, Sissianega on the first opportunity read it the right way, but he was off his line. The retake comes up, Pavone steps up, buries it in the back of the net. And to everyone's surprise, without Chicharito, without Dos Santos, without Zlatan. Right, Phillips. And Rossi! Bingham allowed the ball to escape. It was drilled at him, but it fell so obligingly to Diego Rossi. And we're back level at two apiece. The Continental Tire Analyst Corner was the last thing the Galaxy want is the ability for LAFC to play through the middle because then it opens up your center backs. Great first time touch from Mark Anthony K to lay it into Bradley Wright Phillips. Now Bingham does anything he can to make this save. Now it's the rebound that plays in a factor, but that layoff from Mark Anthony K playing between the lines, laying it off. Diego Rossi gets his second of the game. But that was great interchanging runs from Mark Anthony Kay and Bradley Wright Phillips. That was more like it from LAFC. Absolutely. Tactics and ability to make LAFC uncomfortable. It just goes to show you how talented LAFC is. They haven't been great, and here we are 2-2. And that's the halftime score. No, Javier Hernandez. The news broke just an hour or so before kickoff. A calf injury sustained in training on Thursday, keeping the Mexican out. Significant fees allows them to regenerate the team to buy in new talent. But with the world situation, is that likely to happen? I'm not Taylor? sure it is, John. I'm not. Legette.
and Pavone and Christian Pavone's in here for the Galaxy and remarkably they lead yet again now the flag is up and his celebration has been cut short he wheeled away towards the corner flag and this record and this is Diego Rossi and LA Galaxy are exposed here and it's Bradley Wright Phillips Rodriguez in support and Wright Phillips has managed to tuck one in and he dances a jig of goal scoring delight at this stage of his career it's to be viewed as a bonus a second chance after his prolific time at the Red Bulls and he's making a mark and an acquisition that just leaves you shaking your head how can LAFC get a guy that scored over 108 goals in seven years with one team Bradley Wright Phillips has made a name for himself in these moments Gonzalez thinks he has him set up but just a half a yard a little window to bend this around Gonzalez and around David Bingham just a fantastic finish from Bradley Wright Phillips for his 110th career MLS regular season goal. But his first against the LA Galaxy at the sixth time of asking. He's had his injury problems. He Quajo rushing off Blessing and he got some real meat in the shot. And Kay splitting the defence. And here comes Rossi for a hat trick. The first LAFC player to score a treble in this fixture, matching what Ibrahimovic achieved for the Galaxy. And clear daylight in figurative terms between the sides at last. It's exactly what we were talking about at halftime. As promising as the first half was for the LA Galaxy without Jonathan Dos Santos, without Javier Hernandez, it was still 2-2 because LAFC, in the blink of an eye, can flip the game on its edge. Ball simple to Mark Anthony K. No pressure in the midfield. He picks up his head. Simple ball for Rodriguez, and Rossi finishes his hat trick. But in the blink of an eye, They've got four or five players that can open you up and turn the game around. And it's been that kind of game for LAFC. Third LAFC hat trick for the flying Uruguayan, Diego Rossi. And it leads. <laughs> Tournament that has gained momentum. And that's El Munir. And that's a brilliant fifth. Struck with clarity, power and perfection. And no question where the honours in LA are heading tonight. A downcast Guillermo Barrosquiloto. His team ultimately being swept aside. And this is just the quality that LAFC bring in multiple positions. El Munir coming off the bench. Just no pressure on him whatsoever. Simple touch in the middle. A great technique here with the left foot but just how frustrating it must be to go up against this LAFC team for 90 minutes. It is relentless and you have to be on your game for all 90 minutes. Otherwise, you look up at the scoreboard and it's 5-2. I mean, Bingham says. And so for Scalotto, there is real pressure on him. Absolutely, make no mistake about it. Now, is there enough goal that was yes, he regarded did. as the best of the under 20 World Cup against the US? Janela and Rossi. Bingham says that's offside. Rossi's not hanging around to argue. And the celebrations tell you that LAFC have six. I mean, just look at the midfield that they brought on in this second half. Duke's 19. So Fuentes, 21. Janela, 21. Young, energetic. Players that fill in the gaps. This ball's hit. Now, is that offside? Well, that looks close. That's what the Galaxy were claiming. Right? Because when this ball's hit from Janela here. Oh. 
Well, if this stands, Rome and LAFC do have six against their neighbours and rivals for the first time. And this is now the joint highest scoring El Trafico so far. Wow. Exactly. 